That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Hey there, you guys, and welcome to school for the week of March 2nd. Let's kick out the week by turning the Miss Fisher's class for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Put your hand on your heart. Repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which I stand, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Mrs. Fisher class. Job well done. Let's see what's happening at our Armstrong this week. Another busy week. Thanks for the update. We've moved into the month of March. Let's find out what the weather will look lo be like during the happiest month of the year. Monday and Tuesday is going to be rainy, and uh, when Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday is going to be sunny. But Wednesday is the coldest day, which is 37 degrees. Thanks for the update. We have a celebrity in our midst. One of Armstrong's fourth graders was recently selected as a future chef and was featured in the newspaper. Take a look. Hello, Armstrong Eagles. I'm Mr. Bodden, and I am here with a very special guest, Emma Herrera, who was awarded a Future Chef of America Award, and we're going to be asking her some questions about that today. So in order to win this award, Emma, I understand you had to cook a very healthy meal. Can you tell us what you cooked? Um, I made a... A fruit pizza. What kind of fruit did you put on the pizza? I put on some strawberries and bananas, pineapple, and apple. How many other kids made a recipe for the judges? 24. I'd like to ask you, what advice do you have for our Armstrong Eagles if they want to prepare their own meals and recipes? I would just say probably to make it healthy and to make sure it's safe for you to make it. All right. Thank you and congratulations, Emma. I can't wait to try some of that pizza. Nice work. You make Armstrong proud. Let's see all that happened at Armstrong this week with another weekly whip around.
Amazing stuff, Eagles. Keep up the great work. We also had many students finish another book series in the reading Blast Off this week. Check it out. Butterfly in the sky. I can go twice as high. Take a look. It's in a book. A reading rainbow. I can go anywhere. Friends to know and ways to grow. A reading rainbow. Awesome work. Keep reading. Mr. Bodden has a reminder for us about how we go up and down the grand staircase. Let's turn to him. Good morning, Armstrong Eagles. This is the Grand Armstrong Staircase. And it is very wide and very large and very spacious. However, it can get very crowded when there is more than one class on the staircase at a time. One thing we've done to help alleviate all the congestion is to always remember to walk on the right-hand side of the stairs. So if you're going up, you're on the right-hand side. And if you're going down, you're on the right-hand side. Now. You guys have been doing a great job of that. But what we're noticing is that sometimes classes from down this hallway are coming here and they're walking down from their classes and they turn to go up the right-hand side of the stairs and oops, they're on the wrong side. And there's kids coming down at the same time and it's a crash. And Mrs. Sor Sorensen is going to show us how this works. Come here, Mrs. Sorensen. Let's pretend Mrs. Sorensen is coming down the right hand side of the stairs and I'm coming this way and I turn around the corner and boom collision so here's how we're going to prevent that first grade if you're coming down from your hallway this is the way you're gonna go follow me try to keep up but don't run in the hall you're walking down with your arms folded, and instead of going straight toward the stairway, you're going to turn this way. Camera person, which is Mrs. Dillon, can you see underneath the stairs there's these two pillars? You're going to walk with your class underneath the stairs, behind these two pillars, around the corner, and then when it's time for you to go up the stairs, you are on the right-hand side, and you won't crash like I did with Mrs. Sorensen. And you can go straight on up. Your stairway lies on the whispering And now, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. Thanks, Mr. Bodden. That helps. Next, let's check in with our good friend, Lem. <laughs> Good morning, Armstrong Eagles. Time to check in on last week's LEM challenge. We challenged you to find out how many words could be made with the nine letters in the word chipmunks. And the answer is, drum roll please, 362,880. Again, 362,880. That is a lot of words that can be made with those nine letters. Let's go to the helmet cam and see what Lem is up to this week.
Oh, hi, Lem. How's it going? Oh, hey, come up up here. Hey, what's been going on this week? Oh, yeah, that is exhausting. What, you want to ride down? Uh-huh. Oh, okay, I guess we can get your ride down. Come on. Hello, Mr. Howe. Oh, hey there, Lem. Did you see your butt? I don't usually wear this. Ah, uh, there we are. Bottom of the stairs. Take you over here by your house. Alright, well, there you go. Oh, you're welcome anytime. I know how it is when you get worn out. Yeah, it is kind of fun from way up here, huh? You can see a lot of stuff. Very exciting. Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. I'll ask him. All right, Eagles. Lem really enjoyed the view on top of my head, and he kind of liked it up there, would like to be up that high more often. And so he was wondering if he got all of his cousins and brothers and sisters and everybody to come from the woods, how many of chipmunks standing on top of each other would take uh, to reach the top of my head. But he said, actually, as we walked by Mr. Howe, that Mr. Howe's head looked fluffier and he would prefer being up there. So your challenge for the week is to find out how many chipmunks standing on top of each other does it take to be as tall as Mr. Howe. Good luck with that. Have a good week. Oh, that crazy lem, he's always getting into something. That's it for us. Thanks for watching. This is ABC News. I don't know you C. Larson 213 and M. Marsing 206, but if you think you can humiliate me in my class, think again. Oh, I'm coming for you with lots of reviews and quizzes and examples and brilliant students and 100% scores. I can't wait to dominate your classes while you beg for mercy, but you'll get no mercy from me. I will have my revenge. You'll regret the day you crossed angry Sorensen 2-1-1. Miss Sorensen, uh -huh. can you tie my shoes? Oh, sure, sweetie. Oh, and by the way, it's Mr. Sorensen. Angry Sorensen, angry Sorensen 2-1-1, ha, ha, ha.